I'm Jacques Belarjan, and I'm a professor of epidemiology in the Department of Preventive Medicine and Community Health at the University of Texas Medical Branch in Galveston. I'm here today to discuss a recent publication by my colleagues and myself that will appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. This study is called Risk of Venous Thromboembolism in Men Receiving Testosterone Therapy. In this case control study of over 30,000 commercially insured middle-aged and older men, we found that testosterone therapy was not associated with an increased risk of venous thromboembolism. In addition, none of the specific routes of administration examined, topical, transdermal, intramuscular, were associated with an increased risk of venous thromboembolism. These findings also persisted when we examined different exposure windows. We undertook this study for several reasons. The use of testosterone has increased dramatically, threefold or more, over the last 10 years. There's been a lot of concern and conflicting evidence about the risks associated with testosterone therapy, particularly cardiovascular events like myocardial infarction and stroke over the last several years. In 2014, the FDA required manufacturers to add a warning about potential risks of venous thromboembolism to the label of all testosterone products. This warning, however, is based primarily on post-marketing drug surveillance and case reports. To date, there have been no published comparative large-scale studies examining the association of testosterone therapy and the risk of venous thromboembolism. As a result of this conflicting evidence and the broad media attention it has received, there are many men with clearly defined hypogonadism who are afraid to take testosterone therapy. And there may be physicians who are reluctant to prescribe testosterone therapy based on this conflicting recent evidence. It's important to acknowledge for a man who is truly hypogonadal, there are clear risks to not taking testosterone therapy. Osteoporosis, sexual dysfunction, decrease in lean muscle mass, increased adiposity, and possible metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular disease. So it's important to acknowledge that further research needs to be conducted to rigorously assess the long-term risks of testosterone therapy. So to date, there have been no randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials that have been large enough or have been followed long enough to rigorously assess these risks. So what we need right now is large-scale, long-term, double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trials to further examine these risks. So our study is the first large-scale comparative study of testosterone therapy and venous thromboembolism. So what does this study mean to patients and physicians? Certainly, with the big increase in testosterone prescribing over the last 10 years, coinciding with increased direct-to-consumer marketing and the big increase of commercial specialty men's hormone clinics, there are likely to be many men without hypogonadism who are seeking and taking testosterone therapy. And for these men, given the still unknown long-term risks of testosterone therapy, the benefit-risk ratio is not favorable. But for men with clearly defined hypogonadism, this study provides the first real evidence on this particular outcome, venous thromboembolism. So it offers a basis for patients and physicians to have an evidence-based discussion about the potential benefit-risk assessment for this particular outcome. The next step for testosterone research is certainly more large-scale observational studies using large administrative databases and electronic medical records. Uh, certainly more and longer and larger randomized clinical trials. And also more in-depth qualitative studies in which we can assess testosterone use that is discordant with clinical guidelines. UTMB Health working together to work wonders. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. 
There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.